Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a wave, an ocean wave, with some colorful uh, colors. And <laughs> I'm going to show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I'm trying to try to keep this one uh, beginner friendly. I think uh, it's not going to be too difficult. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live show. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so this was my reference photo. I really love the colors in this. Um, I had to uh, adjust the, the picture just a little bit uh, because I kind of added some to the bottom here just so that it would fit the ratio of our canvas because this one was a little bit longer than it was wide. Um, so I didn't want to cut off the side of the wave here. It would have it would have cut off like about that much of the wave on this side if I had made it the same um, proportion or, or cut the... Uh, crop the photo to the proportion of the canvas, if that makes sense. So I just kind of decided to add a little bit to the top and bottom to adjust um, so that we can get all of this good color over here on this side. I'm using a Pro Belgian Linen canvas board from Fredericks today. This is uh, kind of my go-to canvas. It's a 9 by 12 inch. Uh, it's got a really good um, soft texture. Uh, and it's got a nice firm canvas board underneath so that uh, it's not going to warp. All right, let's do this. So thank you to Fredericks, our canvas sponsor. Um, today I'm just going to be using a few brushes. Uh, I grabbed a few filberts in different sizes. So I've got the 6100 series in my Princeton brushes. These are the green handled ones. I've got an eight, four, and six filbert um, for some of the wave sections and then I've got a small number four filbert in the velvet touch line so that's uh, the different numbering systems either the same size <laughs> brush same number brush no, these are both four filberts but obviously you can see that the sizing uh, is different on the velvet touch um, and these are the willows blenders the velvet touch for some of the clouds I'm going to be using three eighths inch and quarter inch a Willow's Blender, and then I'm going to use a script liner. This is a number two script liner. It's got a really long, um, it's sometimes called a rigger, um, just a long um, liner brush for some of the um, small details in the wave. If you don't have that, you can just use a regular liner brush or a small round. will work just fine. So thank you to Princeton for our, our brushes today. I'm going to go over our colors really quick. We'll be using zinc white, titanium white, unbleached titanium, quinacridone magenta. Um, I don't know why I put these down here because they really should be up here, but this is uh, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light, yellow oxide, Indian yellow hue. This is a new color, quinacridone burnt um, orange. So quinacridone burnt orange. Um, it's got a really beautiful, vivid color. It's transparent. Um, if you don't have that, you can substitute um, kind of an orange with your uh, quinacridone there to kind of help make something similar. Burnt sienna plus quinacridone, maybe. Um, this is thalo green. This is teal. Thalo blue, green shade. Uh, teal is just these two colors mixed together with some white. Uh, light thalo blue here. So this is just thalo blue plus white. Ultramarine blue, light ultramarine, doxazine purple, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. And like I said, if you don't have all these exact colors, just use what you've got. Um, I've got, you know, all of these different hues of yellow, but if you don't have all of these, you can still do this and just kind of adjust as you, as needed. Okay. So it's Quinecronone Burnt Orange's first live show. It It is, I think. Wow. Yeah. I used it for the fox that we were working on in our... Um, in the Patreon? In our Patreon group, and I really liked it, and I realized I need to be using it for this, too, because okay. I saw some of it in here. There's, It's just a, because of it's transparent, it's just got a luminosity that um, you kind of can't get any other way. And it, since this is such, such a light, you know, uh, I'm gonna all call the light it, shining through the wave. I I'm going to call it QBO. QB, QB, QBO. QBO. Yeah, just for short. I like it. Thanks. <laughs> I'm an engineer. We do stuff like that. <laughs> You're also a man. You need an acronym. <laughs> that, exactly. To survive. <laughs> right. So uh, the wave on our reference photo here, the, the shoreline or the coastline here, the 
uh, horizon line is very, very low. And honestly, this if you put a frame on here, it'd probably cut off most of that. So I wanted to raise it up anyways, um, and it kind of helps because, uh, like I said, we were going to be moving our horizon line up just to get more of this wave to show. So I'm just going to go up just a little bit, and if you want to, you can use a um, T-square just to make sure that this horizon line is exactly horizontal because we want it to be perfectly straight on the horizon line on water. And then I stopped about not quite halfway. So there's our halfway mark. Here's our halfway on our canvas right here. Um, so I'm gonna make my circle just a little bit above and around that halfway mark. And you're gonna kind of do a circle that's sort of pointing back down towards here. And then about right here. So just about where almost to the center of this, just a little bit off to the, the side, that's where this is gonna start coming up right here. So you just kind of do your circle here and then come off center just a little bit, go down and then start your uh, curved line to bring it up to that point. And that'll get your kind of wave shape like that. And then we're gonna bring this back down, curve it out this way. And then there's going to be these wiggly lines here and we're not going to really worry too much about this because most of this is going to be covered up by our sky but if you want to draw it in you can right there okay and that's pretty much all we're going to do for now um, if you want to we can also put in um, kind of our radiate our lines radiating out uh, from center so really they're kind of going uh, to the center here um, so if you kind of find the center of your circle there you're going to have these sections of wave they're really wavy lines they're not straight lines that kind of come uh, and point towards that and they're getting it's like a spoke they're getting wider as they go away from this point here and then right here this one is kind of coming like that and then these are all kind of curving in straight once they get over here they're straight Right, and then we've got some clouds up in here, but I'm not going to draw that. Um, our, our sun is going to be right here. So it's kind of right where we started that curve. You just kind of come off to the side a little bit and just above the horizon line. So that's going to be our sun. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the... Um, uh, let me see what brush I want. I guess I'll use the large, large filbert here. This is number eight. I'm going to get some water on it. I'm going to pick up some white, and I'm just going to go ahead and put my sun in there with some white. Because I want to leave that part nice and bright. And I just use regular school chalk, so it's going to mix a little bit with this color, but that's okay. I'm going to add some cadmium yellow light to my white. And come around it. I do my horizon line and there's a lot of yellow undertones in a lot of this painting so I'm gonna just go ahead and use yellow um, for sort of some of our base coating and then we'll add our other colors on top it's really easy to cover over yellow but it's really hard to get yellow um, back to bright if you try to put it over top of a another color darker color so start with this lighter color and work our way to the dark this time okay so there's our yellow there and then as I'm going up it's going to start getting blue but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put some of this yellow down in here it's kind of thinned out a little bit now I don't want to lose that horizon line so I'm just kind of trying to go over that chalk pretty lightly so I don't lose my line there and put my yellow in do you How are you doing today, huh? Good. Do you mind if I slurp some hot chocolate over here while you're I doing that? I guess so. <laughs> Don't 
want me with it. You don't have much of a choice, so. I can't have hot chocolate anymore. It's really sad. I'm sorry. I'm trying to drink enough for two of us. I know. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Good. Yeah. I'm excited about painting this one. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah. Ever since I saw it, I was like, ooh, I want to paint that. Yeah, several people in chat have made the same comment that they're excited about this one. Mm -hmm. This was, uh, I think, the number two. We voted. Um, number one was the hammock seascape that we'll be doing. It's on our schedule already. Um, but uh, this was, I saved that one for later on in the in next month, early next month. So wanted to do a fairly easy one for today's video since we're going to have a bonus video tomorrow that I figure is going to take a while so hopefully this one will go to come together pretty quickly today okay we got a question okay they want to know do you ever recommend using an extender to keep the edge from blending um I you can if that helps you I mean I would just use whatever works for you I don't particularly like extenders they make the paint a little slick and I don't really like the feeling of it on my brush but um Honestly, it's, you know, if it works for you, I would say use it. And, you know, I'm all for, somebody asked me why I didn't use a mop brush for the uh, rose painting. And I was like, because I don't, <laughs> I don't just, I don't know. I don't, I don't generally use mop brushes. <laughs> I'm a little lazy and I just like to use the mop brush that I'm having. And I kind of use it like a mop brush, but I don't switch out. So, I mean, if you have a technique or a brush or something that you like to do that works for you, by all means do it. So... Um, you know, I, I just don't particularly like, like them, like using extender. So, okay. So I'm leaving the darkest areas here where I'm not seeing a lot of yellow in there. I'm going to go, you know, I can, uh, go back in and add that later, but those are kind of the main yellow ish areas. I'm going to clean my brush out really well now. So I don't want to have green sky. I'm going to try to get all of that yellow out before I put in my blue. And I'm going to grab some phthalo blue and some ultramarine and make a royal blue out of these two. And just a touch of purple, maybe. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber. To, it's kind of a, it's not a super bright blue. It's kind of a gray blue up there, so... I'll add just a tiny bit of white. Yeah, that's pretty. That might be a little bit too, too much white. Let me add a little bit more phthalo, a little bit more of the burnt umber. There we go. A little bit more ultramarine. I'm just making up a little bit more of this so it's a little bit darker. That's good. There we go. Oh yeah, that's nice. Nice rich blue up there. And if you don't have these colors, just use whatever you've got. It doesn't have to be this exact color. You can do yours with brighter colors if you don't want it. Kind of this stormy blue color. Add in a little bit of white here. I'm going to go right up to that wave. And I'm not really going to worry too much about the edge of the wave. We'll just define that later. But I'm going to go ahead and add this and just kind of blend this edge out so I don't have to worry about having a hard edge to fight to cover later. I'll just soften that edge up. And then whatever colors we put on top will blend pretty easily over the top of it. Okay. A little bit of white. Just blending that in while that's wet. Kind of a, I don't know if that's a cloud or what, probably. And then I'm going to 
grab some purple. And use that right under here. We have a canvas question when you have okay. a moment. Yes. They would like to know if they can't get the Frederick's red label. Right. Would you suggest a linen or a water canvas? Watercolor canvas? Well, yeah, they said H2O canvas, so. Um, water would be pretty hard to paint on, I'm guessing, so. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, The red label are their um, kind of discounted. Uh, they're the, there's pro and then artist. Or, no, I'm trying to think of the different. I can't remember now. Um I'm in my art brain here. Sorry. <laughs> um, they have three different levels of of uh, canvas quality, and the pro is obviously the highest. And then there's there's a the red label is kind of in between. So it's or it's I'm sorry, it's the cheapest. Um, okay, so lower level. Quality, lower level of quality. Yeah. Okay. So um, more of an I'm not sure level. about the H2O how that falls in there. Not sure. But I would think that that would work, probably. It's probably uh, the watercolor canvases I've used before, and they work well for acrylics. You know, I, I used one a few weeks ago. I can't remember what we were working on. The There's little square canvases. Okay. And for them just coming in, which canvas are you using right I'm now? using the uh, Frederick's Pro Linen okay. canvas board for this. Okay. So I'm just adding a little bit of that dark blue over here. Try not to go over the the yellow too much. This is going to be teal in here, so I'm just kind of putting it in. Getting our under layers in there. I'll go ahead and add a little bit of purple down in here. not gonna I don't want to go too far with it right now so good enough and then there's a little bit of this purple right here kind of outlining this part of the wave so go ahead and put that in and put in a little bit of the color that's gonna be up in here this is all gonna be pretty dark all up in here. Okay. It's gonna look, this is definitely one of those that's gonna have a, you know, ugly stage for a while. Just getting these first layers on, it's gonna look really weird until we get the layers all set. All right, so I'm going to get the light thalo blue. This is just thalo blue plus white. I'm going to add a little bit of this more white to it, and it had a little bit of purple there, so I'm going to just go ahead and go with that and use that up in here. This is where I want to make sure that I get rid of all of that um, pink from our um, chalk. So if you see any chalk lines still, go ahead and try to cover that up up there. Looks really pretty. And then I'm going to grab some white and do more white where the where the uh, yellow and blue mate right here. See, next time you do a video like this, uh -huh. we shouldn't tell anybody what you're painting. <laughs> and I have to guess. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, because we wouldn't have no idea what you're painting right now. Yeah, I know. We didn't know. Yeah, this definitely is not obvious. Okay. Trying to get some pure white. I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow that's left over down here. It's just slightly tinted yellow. 
and I'm going to go back and forth and kind of glaze over this yellow that's already there. So you can see it, it's, it's seeping through, but we're going to have this kind of light blue also on our brush. If it's turning green, just, just clean out your brush completely and do this again. Um, you don't want it to be really green. I mean, a little bit is fine, but you know you don't want it to be a green sky. And most of this uh, transition is going to be broken up by clouds too, so it doesn't have to be perfectly blended right now. And then where those two meet, I'm going to grab some of this darker blue. Spray my palette so this color that I blended doesn't dry out before I get the chance to use it. Wipe my brush clean, pick up some of that darker color, and just kind of go back over. Right there. All right. Good enough. So let's go ahead and use this light phthalo blue. We'll use some teal. And just try to fill in some of these areas that are still not quite covered. And just get our first layer down of color on our canvas. And I'm going in all of this, even though we're doing stripes, right, across this way, they're all going to have this motion. We're going to be following this curve here. So always be kind of looking at that curve and making sure that your brush strokes are kind of matching up to that curve there. The camera's a little off center, so I gotta zoom out to keep you on. There you go. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> My job is most important into this whole organization. <laughs> Yeah, they come just for the camera work. <laughs> impressive. Most impressive. <laughs> but you're not a painter yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. This is actually coming out quite a bit right here. So just trying to define that edge just a little bit of that wave now. And like I said, I'm just really kind of trying to get the whole canvas covered. That's the main thing. It's not, it's not going to look too great right now. I think that's pretty close. So to me, just looking at the way the colors are here, mm -hmm. this looks like it's going to be one of those paintings where you could stop almost anywhere. Yeah. And it would be incredible. Yeah. Like depending on what kind of image or look or feel you're going for. Sure. Yeah, for sure. It can definitely be individualized. That's why I, I like this kind of painting for a beginner. I think that it's fairly foolproof mm -hmm. you know once it's you, forgiving it's very forgiving yeah you're not going to have to fill in you know lines and stay within your lines you can kind of um you know get creative with your boundaries of your colors and stuff so okay so now we've got our basics on there uh, i'm going to let my sky dry before i do any more to it but i can see over here that there's some holes in the sky and i'm going to use some of this a little blue and water it down. Actually, let's use ultramarine blue too. And just go in with the watered down color and it'll fill in those little cracks in our canvas. Those little 
white dots that you see sometimes. You put your first layer down. Now you don't have to go in and try to cover those up. It's almost impossible to get down in those little crevices. I think it was off camera. There. No? Okay. No, sorry. Okay. Okay, thanks. I just keep so that edge some of that. at the beginning so I can see when the intro is done rolling. Mm. I forgot to move it over. Thanks. Everybody's going, what the heck are they talking about? Well, yeah. Production he... issues. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So went over this area with the phthalo blue, just overlapping into the teal a little bit to soften that transition between the two colors. And then grabbing some more of that teal. And do the same thing in the opposite direction. Kind of trying to create these kind of zigzaggy lines here in our paint, but kind of also trying to make them a little bit soft. We're down here. Same thing, kind of going over the top of the colors that are there and just kind of pick, pick some areas that you want to come down and back up. So we got the Going wave. The oh, go ultramarine ahead. blue here. What? We got the wave today, and then tomorrow the lighthouse. Yes. So you're kind of an ocean thing. Theme. Yeah. <laughs> and it's snowing outside, so that's perfect. I it know. Gets me right in the mood. <laughs> I know. And then people, we've got some people from Hawaii, and then other people from Aruba here today, taunting Ooh. me, taunting me with. <laughs> With how awesome it is mm -hmm. to live where they're yeah, at. It's like, oh, uh, it's sunny in 83 here. Oh, <laughs> woe is me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm using some glazing liquid now. And you can see how it's kind of using that glazing liquid. We can still see that yellow through. It's nice. It kind of gives it that translucency that we're looking for. And I'm using ultramarine blue here. But I've got all these other colors on my brush, so it's not just ultramarine. I'm just trying to get this really pretty soft color going on over here. And now we're going to switch over. And closer up to here is more of the reds. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some quinacridone magenta. <clears throat> Start transitioning that. And again, looking at this... This shape here, I'm going to be small, very smaller brush strokes in smaller sections. And then as I get out, I'm widening and they're getting a little bit wider and thicker as we go away from this little section right there. So short and thin longer and wider as we get away from the edge there. Okay. Let's use some of this up in here with the quin quinacridone. I still have those blues in my brush, so it's kind of turned it into a purple. Very small right there. Okay. And then I'm going to do some longer pieces to kind of connect it. Nice. 
So I'm guessing there's absolutely no way there'll be splatters today. Um, I don't think I'm going to do splatters, actually. I don't see any. Well, I might, if I did any, they'd be but tomorrow. kind of just over there. Yeah, tomorrow I think we'll have some splatters. I think tomorrow will be exploding with splatters. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a... Where is my picture of the lighthouse? I think it's right here. So we're painting tomorrow. So, yeah, we'll definitely have a little few little splatters in there somewhere. <laughs> For sure. Okay, a little bit of this. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of... Lightly kind of dust it over here a little bit just to give our direction. Grab a little bit more of that quinacra down, the brighter color, a little bit of white. And some of this glazing liquid, we'll use it over here. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked if they're if they got some foaming from the paint. Do you suggest to leave it or try to fix it? Foaming? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where. Yeah, I'm not sure why that would happen. It, your paint may have rabies. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> Are you adding something to your paint? Because that makes me think that maybe you're adding too much of, of a medium of some sort um, if it's foaming. Because it shouldn't foam. Um, it, it shouldn't foam at all, really. So... They may have added too much water, possibly... Well, Don't I mean, know. even water wouldn't make it foam necessarily. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Okay, so my theory is still leading. Summed. <laughs> 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 Nobody's come up with anything better. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, goodness, sorry. I hope you... We're able to get yeah, that out. I turned it down. Good, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <clears throat> oh my goodness. All right, adding more white here and I'm gonna come right up to that horizon line now and add some of this using the edge of my brush very lightly and just and putting these very thin lines in, leaving that yellow showing through. So I don't want to cover up all the yellow. You can see why we did the yellow now, because it makes it super easy to go over. And we already have this kind of glow in our foreground now, in our sea. And trying to make sure that I don't cover it all up when I'm adding this too, coming up through here. So wasn't an old yellow, yellow, <coughs> yellow that they had to put down because it had rabies? <laughs> so the paint's got the wild in it. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. 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 Right. It was funny the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and the second and the third. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, at least I have a new saying, the paint's got the wild in it. <laughs> Okay, so now I want to go in between here where these two are coming together and add this highlight section in here. This is that just the quinacridone magenta plus white, but I had some of those blues in my brush still, so it kind of turned like this light purpley pink color. Let's add some over here. Put 
zoom up in here. Again, trying to make sure that I'm always curving my brush to match that curve there. I'm starting to not like this paint. Why? It's got the colors of a certain basketball team. Uh, Lakers. <laughs> That's all right. We'll get some blue in there. There's not a whole lot of Celtic screen there. Sorry. Sorry, hon. Thanks. Uh, quinacridone here. More just solid quinacridones. Add a little bit of white to it, but not a lot. Kind of in the same areas, just adding a little bit darker color. And I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now just because we're getting into some more kind of detail. So just kind of went from big to now as I'm getting closer and closer, smaller details, I'm switching to smaller brushes here. And that one would be the number four Filbert. <coughs> Let's start with the Indian yellow hue. We'll start putting in some of that. I'm going to use some glazing liquid with it. Grab some of this burnt orange, quinacridone burnt orange. I think I'm definitely going to be using this more in more of my paintings coming up. It's kind of a up up and coming paint color, kind of like. Quinacridone magenta. It's. I think I'm gonna find that it's one of those colors that can do things that other colors can't. You know, there's just some colors that you really can't mix, and I think that this is gonna be one of them. This has got such a vibrant, unique hue. I'm using that transparent color with it. And it's that glaze. Super luminous. Really pretty. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. White's going to dull down the transparency. It's also going to change the color quite a bit. You can see how much it's kind of almost made it like a coral color now with the white. So it goes from being kind of orange to being almost a reddish coral when you add that white to it. And I'm going to add a lot because there's a lot, a lot of this lighter coral color in here. You can see really just by going in the right direction with this, right? We're gonna get our wave shape really taking form pretty nicely for us. And don't worry about these dark places here. We're gonna go back in and we'll define these 
dark shapes better here in a minute. So it's okay if they look kind of funky right now. <clears throat> okay, getting more of that Indian yellow hue. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. You can see how it's really vivid yellow. Just going through and kind of creating these sort of zigzag lines through breaking up the color, kind of connecting the colors to one another. Add some of it down here. So to those who are new to the channel, welcome. Glad to that you found us. And uh, if you haven't already, I hope you subscribe to the channel and check out all the videos Angela has out there. Give it a thumbs up also for today. And if you click, clink, if you click the show more and scroll down, you'll see the list of all the paints and the materials, including the Gray Matters palette paper and other things that Angela is using today. And also links to the Amazon store where you can buy some of the art supplies like that. And then also to the brush guys with a 5% off code for Angela Fine Art for the brushes if you need more brushes. <coughs> yes. And who doesn't need more brushes? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a bunch of new brushes from Princeton that we're trying out. This is the first time we'll be using the rigger here, the script liner. Um, so I'm excited to try it out. Alrighty, let's use some of the thalo blue now. Some of this thalo blue light that's already kind of pre-mixed. And I'm going to go in here and add it in transition between some of these colors here. And using this to kind of make sure that I've got my shape. So I'm going to I'll reinforce that shape with this. Go over some of the other colors if I need to and just make sure that I've got that curvature that I want in my wave. I'm using the filbert just because it's rounded edge, so it's going to give me softer uh, edges on here. Even though I'm using it kind of on its edge, I can get some straight lines, but if I kind of set it down right, I'm going to get kind of more rounded, <clears throat> softer transitions between these colors, and that is kind of what I want. So, But you could do this with the angle brush or a round brush or, or even a flat brush if you needed to. It just might have a little bit different look on the ends of the, you know, the transitions between the colors. Let's grab a little bit of the glazing liquid just to make it go on a little bit easier. Glaze over the top of some of that. There we go. The glazing is what gives it that transparency, that that look of translucency that we're kind of going for here. So put the color on and then we go back over it with this translucent color. It kind of adds a little depth. Happy 
happy about that. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of it over here. There's not a whole lot of it on this side, but there is a little. And I'm trying to do this kind of stair step thing that's kind of going like this, you know, in between. So right here, I'm going up in between this one that's coming down. And same thing here, going on the inside of that so that I'm getting this kind of natural uh, weaving of that zigzag kind of feeling. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm doing some of these overlapping brush strokes is kind of looking for those spots where I can fit in. <clears throat> this this color let me use a little bit of the unbleached titanium here with the quinacridone right in here Generally, I'm not using a lot of these opaque colors because they're not going to give us that translucency, but I needed to bring that back up there a little bit to the brighter color, and I am seeing a little bit of this in our wave. So let's add a little bit down in here, too. some lines kind of going right through kind of thin lines going right through that dark color right there okay so we're starting to get the the feel for it now I think starting to look closer to what we want it to be Grab some of that yellow, Indian yellow, mix it with that red there, or the burnt orange, I mean. Mix that up in here. And this kind of comes down around like this. It's kind of curving in on itself. It's curving up. And then this side is kind of curling down. There. Just add a few dots of this color. In here. some of it up in here too but I'm gonna go ahead and put in the let's finish the sky before we do anything more to our wave that way if we go over the top with our clouds we can fix it and so I'm gonna use the quinacridone magenta I'm switching to the three eighths inch willows blender here I'm gonna use quinacridone magenta a little bit of the white And we'll use a little bit of the purple. And spray my palette so I've got a little bit of water to work with here. I 
and rub most of that off the brush. So I don't have a lot of paint on here to start with. And I'm just going to kind of start dusting it on here where I want my clouds to be. It's best with clouds just to kind of build them up gradually. Don't try to put them all on in one thing. They need to look kind of soft. And in order to look soft, you kind of have to just scrub them in really gradually. Put not too much there. So I'm really kind of just dry brushing these in here. Right up to my sun. the glazing liquid just to help it kind of smooth on there a little easier. Wiping most of that off. And just lightly kind of zigzagging. I'm going to come just above that horizon line with this line of clouds. I kind of just go straight across. And then fluff up the top of it a little bit. I'm using that edge of my brush just to kind of scrub, scrub, scrub. And it's kind of mixing with that yellow underneath, so I'm not really having to change the color too much. You can see the difference between it over the top of the blue and the top of the yellow there, it already kind of looks orange. Let's use some of this with some yellow. I'm going to use the cadmium yellow medium with some white. And it's mixed with the color that's on here, so I'm just going to kind of go over the top of some of this down here. The clouds that are closest to the sun here, I'm going to add a little bit of undertone with this orange. And areas that are closest to the sun. Kind of some more cadmium yellow medium. Put in some brighter. Try not to go over the top of our sun too much, though. We don't want to do that again. No, that was not fun. <laughs> we did that by accident. What what painting was that? I can't remember what it was, but we were painting a sunset, and I painted right over the top of my sun yeah. with blue. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, took forever to get it back to blue. <laughs> mm. I put way too many clouds down in here. I don't know really know what I was thinking there. I'm going to get some white and some blue there. Just go back over. This will also kind of soften up any edges that are looking a little sad. Just kind of blend in those cloud edges with this blue. <clears throat> Add a little bit of this yellow 
cleaned out my brush. I'm going to add a little bit of this yellow, cadmium yellow medium, mixed with a little bit of the quinacridone over here. side of that cloud is lit up a little bit. Go ahead and scrub that into this part of the wave too just to get a little bit of that color in here while I got it on my brush. And let's use some of this pink up in here. Bring it up a little higher. solid cloud cover up in here so I'm just gonna add a little bit more clouds up here still kind of scrubbing with very little paint on my brush just slowly building up these layers very good all right let's add grab that cadmium yellow light now with a little bit of white here Add some of that up under here. Highlight the bottom of some of these clouds. This time I'm kind of tapping a little bit, a little bit uh, thicker paint here because I want to get a little bit more color on there. Really pretty. Just a little bit of this purple here. A little bit of that quinacridone here. A little bit dark contrast. A couple spots. ultramarine blue with that quinacridone mixed together. I still have a little bit of yellow in my brush too so it's kind of all mixing together making kind of a blue gray similar to this color up here. Not quite as dark. Go in with some glazing liquid so that it's a little bit softer. And you're going to get it over the top of the wave there. It's fine. Just try to kind of wipe it off if you get it too thick, but it's not a big deal. All right. <clears throat> All right, I think we're pretty close. I'm not going to do too much more with this, but I'm going to go in here and darken up some of those clouds. Just give it a little more contrast. So you can see the difference there between the burnt sienna and the quinacridone burnt orange. It's a little bit more reddish. And picked up a little bit of the other color there. I'm just going to go in here and 
taking up just a little bit right there. Just a few of the clouds. A little bit of this color in there. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Definitely think this area here could use just a little bit of that purpley blue down in here. Just a few like zigzaggy clouds. You notice I'm keeping them all kind of horizontal to or parallel to the horizon line. That really helps. Overall look. All right. Pretty close. Let's get some more of that bright cadmium yellow medium. And now I'm just going to go in all of my open areas here and just add a little bit more of that bright yellow back over the top. It's going to overlap with my colors a little bit, that's okay. I'll brighten up all my areas there. Okay. Ooh, nice. Nice and bright. Okay, let's use this in our wave. I'm just going to use this brush since I've already got it with this color. going over the top of some of these, scrubbing it in. Let's do it up here too. How you doing, huh? Just monitoring chat. Hanging out. Trying to keep you audible. Oh, uh, am I getting soft? Sorry. Yeah, somebody actually paid money to hear hear you louder, so <laughs> 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 I feel bad. <laughs> what do you just just wait till I read the super chat comment. Oh no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll try so, to do better. So the video part is free. If you uh -huh. want to hear her, you have to pay. <laughs> I think that's a new business model. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it's like we can go to museums. You have to buy the little headphones so you can listen to all the... <laughs> think about the art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so I mixed up some... Uh, cadmium yellow medium with my white here. Just... Adding that in here, just trying to add back in some brighter sections of yellow. Just a few. Now that we've got our kind of undercolors all in there, we can kind of tell where to put a few of these highlight little spots. I'll put them around my orange. I was off camera there, hun. Do they have to pay extra for being on camera, too? Well, for the whole video, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. 
So I need to work on the contrast right here between the sky and the wave so we can see where the wave starts in the sky end. So I'm just going to put a highlight right there, a bright highlight. And add some of these, this color down in here. this down here too. Just above the horizon line right there. All right. It's looking good. What you doing? Thumbs up? Talk louder? Okay. I thought you were like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> Well, that too. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they really like me. I know. <laughs> Must be doing really good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Going with the or, uh, ultramarine blue, light ultramarine. There, this is just ultramarine blue plus white. It's like the dance contest in that movie. <laughs> I don't... Oh, when she's tapping him on the shoulder? Or when he's tapping her on, out? No, in the... Uh, um, it's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. yeah, when they tap them out and she goes and hugs Well, them. no, when, like, when they're dancing and everybody's like, oh. Oh, because they're about the, to fall in the yeah, water. Yeah, the floor's opening. Yeah. You're like, hey, they must really like me. <laughs> Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, so just adding a little bit of this. I'm going to zigzag it kind of with the tip of the brush. This time I'm kind of almost using it like a liner brush here. I'm kind of drawing in some gaps in here so you can kind of see through some of the... I'm not trying to cover it up, if that makes sense. Zoom in, zoom in there so they can see what I'm talking about here. No, you're just going to go off camera if I do that. Well, I'll, I'll do it quickly and then you can go back out <laughs> right here. See how I'm doing... Like that. All right, so I'm creating these little shapes. So let's do it with the teal here. I'm going to add a little bit of the light thalo blue. You're still using the number four filbert? Mm hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to do so, this is just a little bit lighter than the teal we used before. And as I get over here, I'm just kind of just doing little dabs. They're kind of disappearing in here, and as it transitions, you're not seeing any more of it. But like that. Okay, let's so do the same thing up here. Are you going to make those blues darker? Yes. Okay. You're yeah, we're still going to put our the background tones. Right. Okay. We're still going to put our darker tones in. <clears throat> okay. 
There's not a, there's not really a lot of teal up in here, so we don't need to have it that much up there. Let's grab a little bit of the phthalo blue, mix that with the light phthalo, just to there we go. Zigzagging it. Oh, okay, zoom out on. Huh? Trying to create smaller lines with this. Little and I'm kind of breaking it up, so I'm kind of tapping and zigzagging at the same time, so it's it's creating these irregular lines. Kind of wiggling the tip of the brush. Okay, Ooh, it's pretty, it's looking nice. Right, let's use some glazing liquid now with this. And we're gonna glaze in to some of these orange areas. There's a little bit of this teal in here. Just be kind of careful not to overdo it. The glazing liquid will kind of soften it up a little bit. And then let's use this over here. There's some down in here. As you get away from the sunlight, it's going to get darker and more blue. So right here in the middle, very yellow, 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 yellow. And then all of these, as you get farther away, are going to be kind of more blue. Let's grab that phthalo blue. Some of that in here. Use some glazing liquid in here to soften it up. And then I'm going to use a little bit of that purple with the glazing liquid. And use it right along that horizon line there. Darken that up just a little bit. And then as it gets closer, it kind of turns more magenta. Maybe a little bit more of the burnt umber color in it. Add some of those darker hues in here. Right now, let's go in with some darker color. I'm going to go in with the burnt orange. And I still had a little bit of blue in my brush, but it's okay. Grab some of that glazing liquid. Soften out any rough edges. Ooh, pretty. Grab some purple glazing liquid. This is the quinacridone or the uh, the dioxazine purple. I still have a little bit of the the uh, other color in there, the orange in there too. So I really, actually, don't want it there. 
didn't wipe that part off. Ooh, took off the color. Ooh. Don't do that. No, just go back in with that <coughs> teal color there. Okay, here's the purple. I'm going to go right in the middle of all of what I've got going on here and try to go kind of over and around some of this stuff that we had going on here. I don't want to cover everything up, but I'm using the glazing liquid with it to kind of help it make it a little bit more transparent. There we go. And then every now and then there's these lines that are coming through. I'll just go ahead and use the glazing liquid with this. And there's these lines that are coming through all the way down. Keep it transparent here. Let's do the zigzaggy lines like we were doing before with this color. up a really dark kind of brownish purple here with the purple ultramarine blue and that burnt orange color. Use some of that in here almost like where it's black. Just a few spots. Really deep. Okay, now let's use it up here. So this was purple and uh, burnt orange and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And I'm using it fairly thickly here. And I'll go back in with some of it glazed later, but right now I'm kind of just trying to fill in few spots but I'm doing it kind of patchy because I want it to have some other colors kind of showing through in places. is more translucent here so I'm going to put a little bit of it in but use the glazing liquid this is what's given us depth don't be afraid <laughs> it's only paint you can always go back over it if you feel like you did too much of this but it'll really help give us a lot of depth here just go for it just make sure that you're doing your lines in the right direction you'll be fine very 
very thin right around here. And this area is very thick right there. Here. Lots of dark color. And this is coming down this way. Pretty. So where do we put this on the difficulty scale? Um, I mean, I think as long as you follow the the steps that I'm doing, it's not, it's not, it's pretty forgiving. So I really don't think it's, it's, uh, di that difficult. I really think it's probably a, you know. Four to five? Yeah. Something like that. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Not like the super easiest one we've ever done, but definitely not the rose, <laughs> you know. The rose is a ten. And then we go down from there, so this would fall somewhere in between. Okay, so getting some more of this burnt uh, burnt color, burnt orange here, adding this. In and around our dark areas. Oh, so pretty. I love this. Little few dots, dot, dot, dot. Let's get some of this dark color right along that edge there. Right in here. Okay. I'm really liking this. All right. I'm going to put some of this color around the dark areas here. Just add a little bit more here and there if needed. We've already got some of this color in some of these places, so it shouldn't need too much. I think we're good. I do want to add a little bit of it to this though, right over here. There's some kind of coming through in these dark areas. Sorry, am I still being too too soft? You are pretty soft today. I know, I'm sorry. This is just a very relaxing picture, I guess. <laughs> I'm getting very zenned out. Getting that light yellow with white. Getting yellow light with white. This color will kind of, since we've got it underneath, it's going to kind of uh, unify it if we have any little spots where it's, like I'm seeing some spots where it's kind of broken up. This will, if you kind of put this over the top, it'll kind of bring it all together. Let's use some of this light. I'm going to use some toxic or some quinacridone magenta in the Indian yellow hue. Make a brilliant orange. Use some of that.
Let's use some down in here too. Okay, so let's switch to this brush here. This is the number four filbert, a little bit smaller. Use... That's a number four filbert too? Mm-hmm. So it's how... the Velvet Touch one. A Velvet Touch filbert. Yep. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's not confusing at all. No, I showed it at the very beginning. <clears throat> you weren't listening. I compared them side by side. How do you know I wasn't listening? Well, because you're like commenting like it's something new <laughs> that I didn't say already. <laughs> All right, so we're going to use zinc white here. And I'm going to use a little bit of this. And let's use some yellow. Let's use the Indian yellow with this zinc white. There we go. I'll see if this is bright enough here. I'm going to go over the top of the blue right here along this edge and define that edge out. It's got the dark color underneath so I'm coming out quite a bit more out from that dark edge. Can you zoom in here? I think it'll be good to see. What is we're it doing o here. is it okay? So we're using a transparent color. What? I'm scared. I know. Oh, sorry. All right, right here. Uh, we're using a transparent color mixed in with this white, so the so that they're both going to be translucent. that dark color underneath so it's I'm gonna go ahead and grab just white with my glazing liquid here Push some of it I'm gonna tap over the transition there with the zinc white. What are you doing? You couldn't see your white, your brush. Oh, your thanks. Your production assistant. Nice. <laughs> and chef. And chef. <laughs> you gonna make us taco shells tonight? Oh yeah. You know, like at the end of the movie, they list all the helpers, like right guide number two behind camera on the left <laughs> side. Woman in background number three. Right. <laughs> Using the thalo blue here with it. I'm just gonna I'm transitioning between the two. There, starting to look good. Let's use some more of this thalo blue. Thalo blue is also transparent, so it's gonna work with this zinc white too. It's not gonna overpower it. And I feel like I need some 
brighter color here. So I'm going to go in with some of the tr opaque light blue here just to define the border on that right there. Coming down. Going back to the zinc white here. Zinc white is just a transparent white, so if you don't have it, you can still use titanium white for this. You just uh, might be a little bit darker. Um, use a little bit of glazing liquid to help thin it out, but you can still get a similar effect with titanium white if you don't have zinc white. This just makes it easier, I think, you know, to get that translucent look. Just putting in our big old splashies here. So how hard are you pressing on the brush right now? Pretty hard. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm laying down some good color here, so. And it's it's thick, you know. It's it's kind of thick on my brush. I'm not uh, thinning it out like I might normally do. It's going on fairly thick. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in with my dark. Let's get that dark purple if I can get some of that. Purple and burnt, um, burnt uh, orange here. I'm going to define the outside and kind of underneath inside some of these little dots there. There are dark shadows in here. I'm using the glazing liquid so it doesn't go on too overpoweringly at first. This line is coming down from here. Almost a straight line in. You you may have said earlier, uh -huh. but as you pointed out, I don't pay attention. <laughs> is there a close substitute for QBO? Um... There it is there, and there's burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna, I mean. Um, that's one of the closer, if you add a little red to that, you probably, could, you know, like add a little quinacridone to that. You could probably get something similar-ish. Um, but there's not really another substitute, you know. You can see the reds here. Uh, Van Dyke red hue is similar. But 
Yeah. All right, this is burnt umber. So we're going, this overall shape is this sweeping this way, up, this is crashing down this way, and they're meeting and doing this bubbling thing right here. So I'm going to grab some of the titanium white now and just tap in a little bit of titanium white, bright hot, bright spots. Through all of this. There's just a few spots over here. There's just bright white. And up in here as well. Oh, oh, okay. You need to zoom out a little bit or I can't move it over anymore. There, that's good. Sorry, we had some buffering issues. Oh. I was trying to look into it. Is it still doing it? No, the video froze for everybody, including me, for oh, about... No. 10, 15 seconds there, but Weird. there's nothing showing on our streaming software or anything huh. that the you know, show connection good, no drop frame, so I'm not sure what happened. Weird. All right, adding some white to the yellow. Adding, doing some yellow. This is with titanium white, so it's Going on fairly bright, thick, opaque. Titanium white will make it opaque, so it'll cover over some of these darker areas here. Just trying to kind of get some bright spots in there. Oh, sorry. Was that loud? Well, since I've got your mic cranked all the way up so I can hear mm -hmm. you, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> hey, at least I'm awake. My water bottle fell over. Right. And some of this yellow in here. Zigzagging. And this is where we can use the liner brush. We can take this yellow and I need to thin it out quite a bit for this brush to work. So I need to add a, quite a bit of water to it. Anytime you're using a liner brush, you need a lot of water and the longer it is, the more water you're going to need. You can add a little bit of the glazing liquid just to make it sure it sticks. So you don't want to uh, add too much water to heavy body acrylics because they can kind of lose their uh, stickiness or, you know, they won't adhere to the canvas very well. And I'm going to just use this to kind of zigzag through here and create some little designs in our dark areas with this yellow. Just zigzagging, not really worrying too much about the design, but I am trying to go in the direction of the flow of the wave, so just still kind of keeping that in mind. If I do any long lines, they're going to be 
in that direction. Some of them are going to be a little Not a paint question. Rounded out there. Whoop. Camera again. All right. We got a paint question. Okay. Uh, they want to know, uh, would using interference colors or any other favorite color that's transparent be a good idea? Yeah, you could. Yeah, totally. Any of those transparent colors would look really beautiful with this. I think you could get really creative and use, you know, any number of different colors. Okay. A lot of this splashy splashy right here, so I'm just gonna use this and zigzag it through all of this area here. And do these lines down through it. This is what gives it that kind of look like foam kind of. adds an extra layer of realism to it. We could borrow some paint from Pam. Some rabid paint. Some what? Some rabid paint. I don't know who, what you're talking about. The foaming paint problem we had earlier. Oh, okay. Jeez. Come on. Well, I didn't know who did it. You were saying S her name like I knew. Who, who I was you didn't say who had the problem. You True. just told... Well, the rabbit paint should have. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Okay. Oh, it's looking really cool, isn't it? I love this. This is really coming together nicely. I'm happy about it. Let's use some of the darker yellow here. Cadmium yellow medium. I think you'll be surprised if you, you know, if you try this at how, at how I think it's fairly easy. I mean, I really do. I don't, I don't think that you're going to, this is very forgiving. You don't have to have your brush strokes exactly like mine to get this look. You know, you can, if you just do kind of the similar colors in the similar places and get the overall shape right and get your brush strokes going in the right direction, you're going to be able to do this. I really feel like you can. on going here with these zigzaggy and add them all through let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit now that they can they can tell what I'm doing and I need to I'm gonna be moving around pretty quick here so I'm just gonna go through some of the darker areas or at least kind of next to them and this will help give us that look that we're look, going for this Kind of lines through everything. See that? And you can leave this part out if you don't like using the liner brush. I think it looked fine without this, you know, step. So it's totally up to you. If this totally intimidates you and you're like, I just don't think I could use a liner brush like that, well then don't don't do it. You know, just make it your own. I love it when I see y'all doing creative things with the paintings. I'm sure your ideas are much better than mine most of the time. I don't have time to really 
get super creative sometimes. I, you know, I kind of have to just get it done, you know. So you've got more time. You can really think through it and do some fun and interesting things with it. All right, it's just starting to come together. Let's use some of the zinc white. Um, clean this out. I'm gonna use some of the zinc white if I can get some clean with this brush. Over in here. It's not really yellow down in here, but I do want these zigzag lines and zinc white will help keep it subtle. some of the brighter white right in here. Go back to the yellow. Do some yellow right in here. You can see what I'm trying to do here. See these lines? This is what I'm going for. It's like these little swooping lines that are all through, really, you know, all through these waves. That's what I'm trying to do here. So that's so why I'm doing these kind of rounded. They're not. Kind of these ra rounded zigzaggy lines. Okay, grab some more of the bright, bright white. Add some more to it over here. See? To the spots where we need it. Okay, so I'm going to use the this brush. Just add a little bit of a little bit of this color in here. I'll help keep it soft using this brush. This is the white with a little bit of the orange, burnt orange. Okay, just trying to see if there's any other colors in here that I've missed or want to add. I'm going to add a little bit more white right in here. It's going with the ultramarine blue. <coughs> Tiny bit of white. I'm going to 
add some ultramarine blue lines through here, like we did with the white. What you thinking? Sorry. Sorry. Right. Yeah, it's okay. No, I love it. <laughs> Everybody loves it. Good. Everybody's cool. So while you're adding all these touches here, and looks like we're getting towards the end. Yes. I'd like to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow is the Patreon bonus video. Yes. And we're going to be painting a lighthouse. Well, not we. Angela will be painting a lighthouse tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be sitting over here eating snacks and drinking and stuff. <laughs> And uh, the Patreon video is available to those who, sus who subscribe to the Patreon at the $5 level or higher. And I just put up on the screen the patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Yeah, and if you're part of that group or, or you know, on Patreon, we'll be posting the link to the video later on today. So it'll be posted so you can find the show mm -hmm. ahead of time. It's not there right now, so don't panic. It's, gonna, it's <laughs> coming. I just didn't have time to do it this morning. So it's going to be up later on today. Yeah. And at the we have a dollar level that does the traceables, so you get access to the traceables, like for right. this. We'll be up later today or tomorrow. I'm making a light blue here with white. Okay, go ahead. And then also gives you access to all of the traceables that she's done since February 2017. So it's not yes. just this one. You can scroll through and find other paintings that you might like and it yeah. should be there and again the five dollar level like we said is the traceable plus the access to the bonus video ten dollar level is all that plus ac access to a private facebook group where she's working on a fox right working now working on a fox i think you need to show people the fox when you got a moment okay i'll go get it for you okay. after this but uh yeah lots of fun lots of cool things going on it's a smaller group we have a lot of fun in there they get to pick the bonus videos and do polls and stuff too. So they have a lot of influence on what we actually paint in our videos in general. Using this light blue just to kind of do these zigzaggy lines, just like we did with the yellow. Just adding back in some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's our fox. He's a work in progress. He's not done. Not <laughs> He's still got creepy eye and lots of work to be done. But this is our... Uh, work nice. in progress on him so yeah. we've got at least two more weeks in there probably maybe well I don't know we might finish him next week we'll see mm -hmm. but yeah he's a lot of fun yeah that's a painting that's done over three or four weeks over the whole month so you right. take your time yep we take our time and do it right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I noticed he had over 1800 supporters now and there what that's incredible it's, I know it's I'm... nuts we appreciate the support so oh much oh my gosh everybody. it's amazing it's... we uh, I pinch it myself every day. I just don't even know what's going on. Hey, as long great. as you're not pinching me, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Going in with some darker blue there. I just noticed that, that I wanted that a little farther out there and a little bit more noticeable. So just going in with the dark, dark blue here. Adding a few little spots. There, and then we'll go with the zinc white and outline it just like we did before, just so that it kind of fits with the rest of it. Ooh, got a little water drop on there. Speaking of water drops, I do think I'm going to splatter just a little bit over in this spot. I know you couldn't resist. Hashtag splatter movement. <laughs> There's a little white little dot on that little guy right there.
You can see some of that blue there just to zigzag through. Oh, that's pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more of this quinacridone magenta here. A little bit of purple. Just a tiny bit of purple in it. I'm going to make sure that this line is really defined right there. So I'm just going to go in with this brush and define that line right through there. It comes almost all the way down like that. Just make sure that's nice and dark and defined. And if you have any other spots that are, you know, where your wave might uh, be disappearing into your background, just go ahead and do that. You know, just kind of outline it just a little bit. And if you need to, you know, add a couple of extra lines just so that it looks like it's meant to be there. A couple of dots there. But you can see how that helps. And I mean, I would go through, you know, you can go through with all of these colors and add just a little bit of each one of these in with your zigzag lines. You know, you can see in the picture, the reference picture, how many different colors are in all these little zigzags. Um, so, you know, I, I would say, you know, go to town, have have fun with it, and do lots of lots of different colors with your zigzag lines. Get as detailed as you want to be. I don't have time to do all of them, but you know. What are you laughing at? Little brush Lily says, "Holy moly, Angela." Oh, <laughs> hey, Lily. Oh, I did want to say shout out to my mom. It's her, it's her birthday. Happy birthday. Not sure if she's watching today, but happy she birthday. is. Happy birthday, mom. Happy 40th. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm staying on her good side. I know. I'm, hey. You're only 15, so. Exactly. Well, no, that wouldn't be right. You're at least 18. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, honey, do we need to have a talk? <laughs> uh, you're getting creepy now. <laughs> I was 15 when you met me, so. Well, that is be. very, very true. <laughs> And you were not 50 at the time, so it's not creepy at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now glazing in here with a little bit of this blue just to kind of tone down some of this yellow and white. But I think we're about done. I'm pretty happy with that. Um I might go back in just with the bright, bright, bright white here and just add a few more little dots of the really bright white just in a couple spots. What can happen with white is that it'll, um, it'll kind of seep, the, the under colors can seep through, so sometimes it takes a couple coats of white for them to really be as vivid as you want them. Okay, so I'm going to use the zinc white now and put the sun rays in. I've switched to the quarter inch Willow's Blender. I'm going to start in the middle of our sun and just start pulling down. This is zinc white plus a little bit of the yellow. I can turn it on my side if I want a thinner ray. But the zinc white helps it stay transparent. Get that look that we're going for. That was a pretty one. Nice. I am going to go in with just a little bit of that white, the 
the bright white. I'm going to add a little bit of the glazing liquid just to make it a little bit transparent, but this is the titanium white. So it covers over a little bit better and just, just go back over my lines just a little bit with that. Oh, that looks nice. I like it. What? I'm laughing at. They want to know, do you ever amaze yourself? Sometimes I do get, um, you know, towards the end of the, I, it's, it's like magic. It really is. I think this is why I enjoy painting so much. It's kind of the, just this last little bit here. It's such a rush to finish a painting and have it look like you want it to, you know. And that's kind of my goal with teaching is to kind of help you get to that point. Because I know when I first started painting, I didn't have that experience very often. It was more frustration than than elation. So, um, Kind of like our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like last Tuesday's video. <laughs> you're saying? Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you missed the, we had a, it wasn't, it wasn't a full on fight, but we had as close to a fight as, as we've ever done on air on Tuesday night for that little, uh, it was probably at least halfway through. It's when I was working on the bird, I made the mistake of having Mark go find me a painting and that oh, God, did not yeah. go well. <laughs> I was like, I'm trying to remember what it was. <laughs> did not go well at all. I was just being a man. Uh, yellow. Here, going in with some yellow, tapping in some bright yellow spots. Yeah, Mark was being a man. I know people were like uh, <laughs> worried for us, but I was like, no, no, this is no, this, this is normal. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> it's more annoying than anything. <laughs> I was like, really. She's like, seriously? Again? It's literally right there. Just, he's like pointing to the to it. And I'm like, yep, right there. Right there. And he's like grabs the one next to it. <laughs> and he's like, it's not it. I'm like, get the one. Keep on going. Just keep looking. It's there. Believe me. It, it's there. Okay. And I'm sure nobody else Teal. has ever experienced that. Oh, no. No, no, no. I think you do it on purpose, so I don't ask you to get stuff for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is teal here. Just going in with some bright teal. Over the top here. Really punching up that color so it's nice and vibrant. All right. I'm going to call that good. I think... A little splatter. Let me do some purple up here. I say I'm calling that good, and then I keep on going. You oh, didn't we're not fooling. Fool. You, no. you didn't. I plus, didn't fool you, did. plus, you said you were going to splatter, so right, I'm right. just like, whatever. You're just waiting for the splatters to happen. I'm going to come out just a little bit farther with this. bit of white. Fun. A little bit more blue. I'm just kind of trying to fix this area here. I'm noticing that not quite where I want it to be. There we go. there. 
Okay. One more little section of yellow right here. And then let's grab my, well, I don't have my fan brush out. Let's grab the fan brush. And I'm gonna use zinc white so it's not super overpowering. You just mix it with this yellow that's here. Whatever's right there. Lots of water. Get it down to kind of a milk consistency. Oh, no. It's uh, too thick. Okay, let's try that again. <clears throat> My paint's getting getting tired. It's been sitting there a while. Let's see if we can get it to splatter for us. There we go. Definitely needs the splatters. And I'm really just going to keep it over in this area, I think. Okay, I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. And if you get too much, you can always blot it. You know, I can go through and blot off some of these so they're not as in your face. Splattery. There we go. Nice. Set of little splatters in there. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to sign it and call it good. It's been a fun one. I really enjoyed it. Super chat. So, we had a whole bunch of people watching us today nice several new people a lot awesome. of, of our unusual suspects too and we had a few super chats the first one was from cindy this is one that paid to be able to hear you <laughs> <laughs> she said could you remind angela to speak louder when her voice goes soft i can't raise the volume any higher on my computer and want to hear her valuable words i'm sorry susan is it susan <laughs> cindy cindy sorry cindy. sorry cindy i try i <laughs> And then Susan just says, thank you, Angela, Mark, and moderators. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Susan. And Ashley says, you guys have quickly become one of the highlights of my week. Oh. Whether it's on Tuesday, after a stressful day at work, or a fun thing to occupy my Saturday. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah, thank and you. And Susan and Cindy will will do better. Yeah, I'm Cindy, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I, I try. <laughs> I'll go over and tickle her or something if I have to to I don't get know. her going. She just gets into that zone of I painting. Do. and When I get relaxed, I, I get... This was one of those that, you know, is very relaxing. I'm sure you'll find it, too, hopefully, if you try it. So, going in with just a little bit of this orange right here, just at the very end. And a little bit more of that right there. Hey, what did you sign with? My Sakura Pigma FB. And there's links in your Amazon store yes. to that? Yes, it's fine, FB Fine Brush. There's MB for medium and, yeah, so mm -hmm. BB for bold, I think. I don't know what bold. B, B, probably bold. I'm guessing bold brush. 
but um, I use the FB for signatures, and they're waterproof. Um, you just need to make sure that your varnish uh, does not have uh, alcohol in it because they are an alcohol-based ink, so uh, alcohol will kind of activate the ink and kind of blur. So um, if you spray on a varnish first, it should not have any issues with it. So just a warning. Yeah. All right, a little bit of white there, and I'm going to stop. <laughs> Boom. I could I could uh, keep going on this. It's a lot of fun. So hope you guys enjoyed it, too. And we will see you on Saturday, Sunday if you're part of the uh, Patreon crew. We're going to be here again same time tomorrow, 2, 2 p.m. And then we'll be back on um, Tuesday with – what are we painting on Tuesday? I'm looking. Mm -hmm. You are painting – is that the 22nd? Uh, carnation. That's right. Our new flower of the month series. So those will be oh, on a little nice. five inch canvas. You can see the kind of the preview um, on the thumbnail. If you go mm -hmm. to the thumbnail, see all the different ones that we're going to be doing. So all year long, new one every month, once a month. So we'll be starting on that. It'll be a fun little project. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your weekend and we'll see you later.